This podcast is a local production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. It's made possible in part by contributions from podcast listeners. Please consider making a contribution by going to the Donate Now tab at mpbonline.org. Thanks for your financial support. Today I have the pleasure of talking to Mona Nicholas, the executive director of the USA IBC, which is a competition here in Jackson, Mississippi, that is about to start up in about a week. Welcome, Mona. Thank you, David, for having me. Well, Mona, tell us what the USA IBC is. Well, USA, meaning United States of America, International Ballet Competition. And we're named that because there are other competitions that happen around the world. Our sister competitions are held in Varna, Bulgaria, Moscow, Russia, and Helsinki, Finland. And Jackson, Mississippi is the home of the official international ballet competition for the United States. That's pretty remarkable. I mean, what, why is it here? Well, I like to answer that question by saying, why not? Right. (laughs) Jackson is the perfect place for the international ballet competition because of our Southern hospitality. People in the South just know how to welcome people. And they definitely get that feeling when we have all of the hundreds of volunteers that that help us with uh, getting ready and while the the competitors are here and um, you know the state and the city they all just roll out the red carpet people have been working for months and I've been working for years but other people have been working for months getting ready for this um, and so we're very excited. And, and like I said, it is the official competition because back in the early 80s, it was um, declared the official international ballet competition for the United States by U.S. Congress. That's pretty incredible. Um, so th- that's just like really special. So it, it can't really be anywhere else other than here. That's right. So when is the USA ABC? The USA IBC begins opening ceremonies on the June the 10th, and it will last for two weeks. And that's right around the corner. That's just about in a week. So when will competitors start to arrive? Competitors will arrive uh, on June the 5th because they have to get here. We have to get them registered. They already start their rehearsals and technical rehearsals here at Thalia Mara. Uh, their daily rehearsals and competitor classes will be at the Jackson Convention Complex. So there's a lot to do before they actually start the competition. And, and I mentioned the opening ceremonies. That is really a special night because each competitor will carry their country flag and they'll march in. The symphony will be playing. It's very, very special and exciting for them and as, and for the audience. And then after all the jury members and our international um, dance school faculty get here and get announced, everybody's on stage and we light the torch. The torch is very similar to the Olympic torch that will um, be lit throughout the competition. Yeah, I remember uh, last the last competition was actually my first competition to attend, and it was right before I started working with the city. And I remember very specifically going to opening ceremonies, and I was like, this is like the Olympics, and it's here in Jackson. And it's such a special night. It's such a special feeling when you see all those performers come in, like you said, with their flags, representing their country. It's such a moment of pride. Um, what, is, what, is, what are some of the things that you've heard from competitors about that experience? What is that experience like for somebody who's competing? Well, it's a life-changing opportunity for them. We, we had many, many people try to be in this competition and want to be in this competition because this is the biggest one in the world. Uh, we had over 340 video applications to go through. And so to be chosen, we only chose 120, is really a big deal. And I actually was in on the session and saw the, the level of a talent. It's just amazing. So it will be something to watch. So we've talked a lot about the upcoming IBC. Talk about some of the history and some of the highlights. Um, I know there's a lot of Jackson ties with some pretty you know well-known names in the area um, who have competed at the IBC. Can you talk a little bit about the history of the competition here in Jackson? Right. Well, it all got started back in ni- the late 70s when some arts-loving individuals and um, 
members of the state government and the city all wanted a professional ballet company to be here in Jackson. So they went out in search of a person who could help with that, and they found Thalia Mara. She was living in New York at the time. She uh, was a former dancer who knew of these other competitions help happening around the world, but Jackson didn't have a competition. And she felt like Jackson would be the perfect place for the United States, just simply from the hospitality that she had been shown and also with her ballet studio emptying out on Friday nights. She couldn't figure out where everybody was going, but soon found out it was to the local football game. Mm -hmm. So she knew that not only did the citizens of Jackson love the arts, but they also loved a competition. Mm. So she went to town trying to, you know, secure this for Jackson, Mississippi, and she won it over, you know, other cities that would have loved to have had it, like New York or Houston or San Francisco, other other cities that had big ballet companies. That's pretty special. What are some of, who are some of the, you know, famous, I guess, winners or some people who might recognize even locally? Right. Well, Kathy Thibodeau That's is right. one of them. In 1982, I believe, she won the silver medal. And that was very exciting. And And she went on to have her own ballet company, Ballet Magnificat. So we're very proud of her. And she we work closely with her even now. Her studio, we have to have a lot of prep and supplies and everything to make this work we have to have 15 ballet studios that are fully equipped that means the proper dance flooring uh, bars and everything a dancer might need and so that's very difficult to come up with all of that luckily our so we've had some sponsors that have purchased some of the marley flooring that we need and we're very excited because the hederman foundation has given us the money to purchase a sprung floor for the Thayer Mara stage. Wow. So that is something we've never had because we've always had to borrow it from a sponsor or even, you know, for the Marley flooring, we have to drive, our production team will rent a truck and drive around, you know, for about three days collecting Marley. But through this sponsorship, we're able to purchase our own. So we're, you know, it's an ongoing process, but our goal is to one day have enough to be able to not have to drive to three different states. <laughs> right. I know we've, we, uh, you and I have talked about that for a long time. You just, that's been a dream of yours. That's really exciting that you've finally been able to, to see that to completion. That's right. amazing. And I'm excited for Thalia Mara to be able to have, you know, Thalia Mara Hall to be able to have her very own stage. Right. And, and I keep saying Thalia Mara Hall, our, you know, it is named after our founder. So she was an incredible person. I did actually get to meet her one time. But the people that have that did know her say she was just a force to be reckoned with. That's the same thing I've heard. You know, it, it's quite um, a special sort of full circle part of what it means to have the IBC in Jackson and in Mississippi. So let's talk about the performers. Where are these performers coming from? Uh, who are the performers for the IBC? Like I mentioned, we um, had... 340 applicants from all over the world so probably from about 30 different nations we will have from approximately 20 nations the the actual competitors that were selected will be coming to perform of course the majority of them are from the United States but we have competitors coming from Mongolia from France from you know Ecuador. <laughs> we have many, many different um, nationalities that will be here, and they've all been working all their lives, um, whether it be a junior division, so their life is not as long, but or own up to the senior div- division, and those go from ages 15 to 28 years old. Well, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Arts Hour on MPB Think Radio. I'm David Lewis, Executive Director of the Arts Commission, here with Mona Nicholas talking about the USA IBC, and we're talking about the people who perform at the IBC. So, Mona, will you tell us, you talked about when they get here, which is on June 5th. Where do they stay? And take us through the experience of being a performer coming to the States from different countries, 30 different countries, nations, uh, what it's like to be a performer, and, and how Mississippi, as you Said, does a great job of rolling out that red carpet. Well, it must be an incredible experience for them because to be able to come to the IBC 
all they have to do is get accepted and have a plane ticket and get here. From then on, we take care of everything. We are going to pay for their room and board. We pay for their rehearsal time in a studio, you know, a a world-class studio for them. And they get to come to every single night of of the IBC, which is over a two-week period. And they meet people from all over the world. It's a wonderful networking opportunity for them. They will be able to participate in choreography classes um, from world-renowned choreographers. They will also be able to participate in a company corner, which is basically a job fair. So besides the opportunity of possibly winning a bronze, a silver, or a gold medal, they and cash awards, they may get a job. Most of them do leave here with a, with a job with a ballet company. Many of famous dancers have gone on to have uh, professional careers that were launched right here on the stage of Thalia And so the planning of this is just, uh, is just amazing because, you know, we have to have a place to house 100 dancers and their coaches. And so Millsaps is the home of that. And they have been wonderful to work with. They will live there and eat there, sleep there, um, and just, you know, become best friends there. It's sort of like their very own Olympic village. Exactly. And then, you know, simultaneously we have an international dance school. So we have international faculty members coming and they will live at the Bellhaven campus. So while the competitors are at Millsaps, the dance school classes will take place at the beautiful studios there at Bellhaven. And then the Jackson Convention Complex will be the acti- where all the activity for the competitors will happen. So that will be daily rehearsals. Um, they each get an hour to rehearse and then they will have daily competitor classes as well, and they'll eat lunch at the um, convention center. Are any of the classes or additional activities available for the public or anybody else to participate in? Oh, absolutely. You can, just a person wanting to see what it's like, can come and watch the competitors take classes. They can also watch the dance school um, take classes, and we call those observation classes. We will also have an arts and lecture series at the um, Jackson Convention Complex. All, I mean, it's just a whole host of things, and you can see a, a complete schedule on our website. But we have our honorary chair who will be giving a lecture, uh, who is um, Ben Stevenson. He is now, he probably wouldn't like me announcing that he's 87 years old, but has had a very, very wonderful career and as an artistic director and choreographer, and he um, has been very active with the USAIBC as well as many of the dancers who have meddled here. We also will have Jennifer Homans, who's uh, recently written a book about Balanchine. She's also the dance critic for the New Yorker magazine. She will be here to talk about her book. We will have Jack Howard Potter, who is, if you've noticed, the beautiful sculpture that's in the middle of the plaza at uh, Thalia Mara. Her name is Dancer 12 in honor of our 12th competition. He will be talking about his inspiration for um, Dancer 12, and he'll also have an exhibit of smaller sculptures that will be on display during the competition. And um, the final... Um, arts and lecture series will be Frank Anderson of Denmark. He's of the Royal uh, Danish Ballet, and he is an expert on Born and Bill, which is a famous choreographer. So what is the website uh, so that people can find more information about that? You can go to usaibc.com forward slash attend. You can buy tickets there, and you can see a whole list of schedule of events. So talk about, let's talk about the the sculpture. It debuted, well, a a different sculpture, very similar, debuted last year. It was quite the hit as far as a a sort of an icon for the competition and and featured in a lot of photos. Um, Talk about getting from there and what the idea was to bring it there and then also getting our, you know, your very own. Well, A friend and supporter, Nan Sanders, 
in Cleveland, Mississippi, um, we we do a lot of work with the Bologna and with uh, they've just been a great partner for us to co-sponsor different dance events and take our patrons to see. And so I saw this beautiful red sculpture when I walked out of the Bologna Theater and found out that Nan Sanders had, um, she has a sculpture garden there. It's the Sanders Matthews Sculpture Garden. And and I may have that backwards. It could it's be the, the Matthews, yeah, Matthews, Matthews Sanders. Sanders. And Nan is a, a former uh, MAC commissioner uh, and right. board chair as well. Yeah, she's yes, great. she's awesome. And so... I had said to her at the time, oh, I wish we could have that for the IBC. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And she said, well, we might could make that happen. <laughs> but that was like two years before the 2018 competition. So about this time before, you know, a week before the competition, Carol Puckett Palmer said, well, what do you feel like you still have left to do? And I said, well, I wish I had remembered earlier to get that sculpture try and get the sculpture here she said i bet it's not too late call nan all i had all it was was a phone call and before i knew it the sculpture had and that was dancer 10 arrived and they put it up i was just amazed at, at how everybody worked together got the sculpture there and that sculpture became a hit and i mean people were taking pictures the dancers were taking pictures and it really just went viral all over the world so i felt like that we needed our own and so i talked to to nan and just begged her really if she would sell us <laughs> dancer 10 and she wouldn't but she did introduce me to jack howard potter and went to see him in new york he showed us his studio and he created um, dancer 12 for us and we just love it and we just love him as well he came for the unveiling in october and he's just a delight and such a nice person. And so we invited him back for the competition. When you also mentioned Carol Puckett, who is also a former MAC commissioner and board chair. And it's amazing to watch how such uh, wonderful arts patrons, they will get it done, especially when you catch on a vision like that and, and help see to fruition something really special. Right. Carol is um, the chair of our board. We both came on at the same time. Well, she had been on the board for a, a long time, but she came on as chair in 2014 when I came on as the new executive director. So we've worked really well together. What I really love about her is that she's very goal-oriented and strategic thinking, and that's something that I enjoy doing and just seeing the plan through, and um, she's been a great mentor to me. This is Larry Morrissey. Thanks for listening to the podcast version of the Mississippi Arts Hour. The show is broadcast on MPB's statewide radio network on Sundays at 5 p.m. For access to all our past shows, please subscribe to the Arts Hour on your favorite podcasting app. Hi, I'm Jason Klein from Fix It 101. If you ever thought about changing the doorknob or fixing a leaky faucet, some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back. You're listening to the Arts Hour on MPB Think Radio. I'm David Lewis, Executive Director of the Mississippi Arts Commission, here with Mona Nicholas, the Executive Director of the USA IBC, a competition that is here in Jackson and only in Mississippi, in America, and it is coming up here in about a week. So, Mona, with the competition, I know that a lot goes into activating all these different spaces, Thalumara Hall, the convention center, but I know that all those spaces in between really become the international village. What is that? And talk to us about what all is going to happen in that space. Well, the international village is basically a strip of Pascagoula Street. It starts at the Jackson Convention Complex because that's where all of the activity will be going on, on on a daily basis with the competitors, whether it be competitor classes that they take, every dancer takes, you know, a two-hour class twice a day to get ready and condition their bodies, or their rehearsal time. Each competitor gets one hour a day. So we are filling up that whole convention complex with the coaches and the competitors and volunteers helping and so they'll be eating lunch in there as well and then including the art center 
which is where our office is housed. We have a whole production staff that's come on board. And I mean, my staff grows from two and a half people up to almost 20 people. And so we're at the Art Center, and we also have two ballet studios there that will be utilized during that time. We also have the media room. We have media from all over the world coming here, and they need a place to sit down and work. So that will be in the with in the Mississippi Art Center. And then, of course, Thyamara Hall, even though there may not be a performance on a particular day, we will be doing technical rehearsals where the lighting and the sound and just everything you can imagine goes on in here. Because, you know, this is a really spectacular event that is not just, you know, you just show up and do. It's well rehearsed and the, even down to the lighting. Our, our stage manager and lighting designer comes here from California. He's been doing, um, he, he's won several Emmys. He's professional guy and he he gets here a month ahead of time so he's going to be here the entire month and just working with the existing stage crew and um, getting the stage ready yeah I I spoke to Jill yesterday and she said that it is uh, every day from 8 a.m till midnight it is all in all hands on deck it really is it's amazing what the production crew does and those are the people who most people don't even know exist which is sad because they are the ones that really make it happen they make the magic happen jill who i just mentioned is the stage manager here at thalumara hall and has been working here since in in some capacity since the building was built and she knows this place backwards and forwards and so does her crew and they are outstanding and so it, it really is you know full court full press effort Exactly. And we've, because of some gifts from the state, we're able to purchase some things on the back of the house that most people don't even know exist and also be able to make the, you know, front of the house, the lobby area and outside beautiful with landscaping and fountain repairs and new carpet. A lot goes into getting ready for the IBC because, you know, it's first impression. You know, some people are coming for the first time or some people are coming back after, you know, some people have been to every single competition since 1979 and they may be from Minnesota. You know, they don't miss an IBC, but we have to make a good impression. Absolutely. We'll talk about, it sounds like, you know, you've talked about so many partners coming together. Who all is coming to the table? You know, I'm sure you're working with the city. What does that look like with the state? What does that look like? You know, we've talked about the repairs and renovations on the front. Talk about what it takes and the actual village, you know, that it takes to pull this off. Well, I left out, uh, I had one more to go on the village. It ends at the West. Oh, great. And they are one of our partners uh, and our sponsors. It's the official hotel for the competition and we're so happy that the Weston is there because now it's just literally walk across the street. So um, they've been wonderful to work with and you know you mentioned the state Visit Mississippi. Uh, Love working with them because they are there for us as far as um, bringing in our international guests. They were actually a sponsor and went with us to the Helsinki competition. So that was a great experience. And we're bringing the Helsinki, a delegation from Helsinki here so that we can, you know, have a roundtable discussion on best demonstrated practices so that we can stay, stay and remain, you know, the, the powerhouse of competitions for these young dancers. Because, again, it's so important to them because it, these are our next stars. These are our next um, future stars of ballet. And um, we need to stay. One of our goals is to have the highest you know, excellence possible, artistic excellence possible. And so by doing this and having these meetings, you know, we're able to make sure that we meet that goal. We also partner with Visit Jackson. They are great. They help us with getting the word out around um, not only Jackson, but people that are going to be in the surrounding, you know, within drivable distances, such as Hattiesburg or the coast, to be able to get everybody to come here, spend the night in one of our hotels, and eat in one of our restaurants. And um, they've just been a, a great partner on that as well. 
So are you, I'm sure you're working with JPD for traffic control and extra security measures. You know, what are all the partners that come to the table to make sure that this is a, a well-oiled and smooth operation? Right. It's so many facets, and security is one of them. And we've already had a meeting with, you know, JPD. We've had a meeting with the Capitol Police. We've had a meeting with the Sheriff's Department and Homeland Security, and we're all coming together, and they all have a plan because we – want everything to be you know go without any hitches we're going to have so many visitors here from other states and other countries and we just want to make sure that everybody is safe and so they all uh, have their task and know what they're doing and working together on that after all it isn't an international competition and the olympics of ballet (laughs) which is amazing so let's talk about We've talked about volunteers. Well, we haven't talked about volunteers. We've talked about partnerships. But let's talk about volunteers. It takes yet another village of individuals uh, to come together to to sacrifice their time to to be a part of this competition. Exactly. I mean, you just can't really fathom how much it does take. And when I say we need a lot of people, we need a lot of people. We need over 600 wow. volunteers. You, you wouldn't even dream that we even had this. Can you believe that we actually have a medical clinic at, at Millsaps? Wow. These dancers are top athletes, so they have to see the medical clinic, you know, whether it's wrapping their leg or their foot or arm. We had a, a competitor from Russia once that broke his, came with a broken arm, so they had to change his cast. And it's just, you know, they have shin splints, you just name it. But our we partner with Catholic. Capital Orthopedic and New South Neurospine, and they are a great partner. Not only do they uh, have the clinic there at Millsaps, but they also are in the audience because we've had competitors get hurt on stage. And not only competitors, there may be an audience member that gets hurt. So we have a team that of doctors and you know physical therapists that are right here in the theater each night. Um, so. We need drivers to drive our VIPs around. We need um, ushers. I mean, think about it. We have, you know, almost 15 different performances. So we need ushers to help people get to their seats. And being a volunteer is actually a very fun thing. I was a volunteer um, starting when I was in college, probably in the late 80s. And I, I mean, I just loved it. And it's such an exciting time because you get to meet so many people. We are listening to the Arts Hour on MPB Think Radio. I'm David Lewis with the Arts Commission here with Mona Nicholas uh, with the IBC. We're talking about volunteers and what it takes to put on the IBC. You've talked about several of the roles that are involved. Talk about some more of, of what people, you know, you've talked about ushers, medical team, backstage, and then even off-site. What all are there, are there people at, the, uh, at Millsaps and at the different locations? Yes, um, dance school, we need people to help monitor those classes because we have observers coming in to watch, so they will help the dance school students get to the correct uh, studio and then the observers that come in. Same thing goes on over at the Jackson Convention Center. We need monitors for each one of the rehearsal studios because, as I mentioned before, the the competitors are rehearsing an hour a, a day. That's really fun because you actually get to see the competitors. One of the big things that we really need help with, because I mentioned that we have 100 competitors. We need 100 of these people. It's called the competitor ambassador. It used to be called the host families. We chose to actually rename that because in, in 1979, they actually had people stay in their homes. Wow. But now, since they're all staying at Millsaps, what you are when you're a competitor ambassador, you are that dancer's cheering squad. You're there for them, and you can write them a note. You can We provide you with a basket, and you can put, you know, maybe some bananas or snacks for them, maybe a teddy bear. Or, or just some, some southern sweets. Some southern sweets, <laughs> just anything. And, you know, you may want to offer to take them to the store or out to lunch or whatever. Um, but we need 100 people to do this. And you, you can take more than one. And this is a really great thing to be able to do with your child. You may have 
um, someone who is a little ballet dancer or hip hop dancer or tap dancer. It's just a fun thing. And, you know, they may meet someone from a different country. I love to tell this story. Nina Ananishvili, who came here in 2016, returned to Jackson with her ballet company from Tbilisi, Georgia. She had won the City of Jackson Grand Prix Award. Now, that award has only ever been awarded four times in the history of the IBC. And as you can imagine, you have to be really, really, (laughs) really fantastic to win that because it's not awarded every single time. And she went on to be named one of the top 12 prima ballerinas of, of all time. Wow. She, but her career was launched right here on this stage. And so she has a very special place in her heart for Jackson. When she came back, she brought her teddy bear with her oh. that her host family had given her in 1986 when she won the Grand Prix. And they were able to reconnect. And so you can imagine this is a very special thing for a young dancer. That really is. That's such an amazing way for us as, you know, Mississippians, as Jacksonians to be able to really, you know, invest in what this is and make an impact in a, a, what seems to be a small but really large way. Yes. And that's where the Southern hospitality is shown. And it really is what sets us apart from the Bolshoi and the yeah. and the Helsinki and Moscow and Varna because, you know, even though the Bolshoi Theater is there in Moscow, we still believe that Thayamara is beautiful in its own way, but they don't have the Southern hospitality. Right. That's incredible. What a special way for us to be able to really showcase what we have. <laughs> This is Larry Morrissey. Thanks for listening to the podcast version of the Mississippi Arts Hour. The show is broadcast on MPB's statewide radio network on Sundays at 5 p.m. For access to all our past shows, please subscribe to the Arts Hour on your favorite podcasting app. at your vehicle, think of MPB. Need to get rid of your ride? Donate it by calling 877-MPB-4-CAR. Need to have some work done on your truck? Listen to AutoCorrect Thursdays at 10, Saturdays at 11. An MPB license plate reminds you that MPB is with you wherever you go. Go to your county office and ask for an MPB car tag. MPB and cars, better together. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back. You're listening to the Arts Hour on MPB Think Radio. I'm David Lewis with the Arts Commission here with Mona Nicholas, Executive Director of the USA IBC. It's a competition that is here in Jackson and in Mississippi and happens in just about a week. Mona, we've been talking a lot about the IBC. Um, It happens every four years, but This time, it's every five years. Talk a little bit about why it's this five years. Well, we chose to delay the competition by a year because originally we were supposed to be in 2022. It does happen every four years, but because of the pandemic, it delayed the other competitions. We try to do a rotation with them. So we had a Zoom call with the other competitions around the country, and quickly realized that they were going to reschedule for 22, which was our year. (laughs) And because the dance world is not a, you know, there's a limited number of dancers, you know, at this level, we decided to give up our year to them and delay to 2023, which proved to be the right move. Um, That gave the economy more time to reset the travel industry time to recalibrate and the dancers to get back in the studio because many of them had been trying to have class in their kitchen (laughs) (laughs) so now this um so 23 was definitely the right time so they've been back in the studio we're recalibrated it's time let's talk about walk me through opening ceremonies and how the competition progresses a breakdown of what that looks like 
So June the 10th will be opening ceremony. We, the, as I mentioned before, the competitors carry in their uh, flag and the symphony is playing. It's very ceremonial. And then after the intermission, then the Washington Ballet will perform. And wow. we have many um, com- former competitors and medalists that are dancers now with the Washington Ballet. So that's going to be a great night. And then we also will start the very next day with round one. Round one lasts for, you know, we'll have evening and matinee performances because we have to get through all 100 dancers. So that lasts for three days. And that will be purely classical ballet. We will have a dark day, meaning no performance, even though there will be rehearsals still going on um, in between each round. So once we get to round two, that's contemporary um, round and a third of the competitors would will have been um, eliminated now that doesn't mean they have to go home but they will continue to take class and they will participate in a choreography workshop so there's lots of things for them to continue to do after round two we have another dark day and another third gets eliminated so now we're down to the finalists And in round three, they will do both classical and contemporary for another three evenings. Round two and round three are just evening performances. The evening perform, every evening performance starts at 7.30. Matinees start at two o'clock. We have another dark day after round three, and now we're down to who's going to (laughs) win. And so on the awards night, They will, the first thing that will happen, so the competitors will know that they won something. They are now the, um, they are going to be a medalist. They don't know which award they got. So the jurors will have already picked which dance they want them to do, which piece, whether it be contemporary or a classical piece. So they will go ahead and perform that piece. The symphony will play with them as well which is another added um, wonderful thing. Once you see the dance and the live music together, it just brings a whole nother level to the performance. And so that is the awards night. After the intermission, then you, the audience and the competitor will find out which award they won. So we will give them their bronze, silver, or gold and possibly even a Grand Prix award. After that, we go on over to the convention complex and have a big celebration at the Grand Prix Ball. And that's for everybody. You can buy your tickets online, same place that you buy your performance tickets. And then the very next night, we call it the Encore Gala. It's exactly the same performance that happened minus the awards. So that's the Encore Gala. I remember going to the Encore Gala uh, last time and seeing the contemporary piece from the group from China, and oh. it blew my mind. That is so Some wild. of the stuff that comes out of that contemporary section is just that unreal. Was world class. It really is. I mean, it's incredible. So, again, we can't stress enough, you've got to get down to Jackson to come see this. So you've talked about... Uh, some of the jurors. Can you talk about where they come from and who the jurors are and what what that what it takes to be a judge? Well, these are seasoned professionals. These are either current artistic directors or uh, former dancers, former artistic directors. And we pride ourselves as uh, as the USA IBC as being fair and um, high standards with in, um, great integrity. And so we try to choose jurors that are from different countries. So we wouldn't ever have seven jurors from the United States. (laughs) So because we want to be fair. So we have jurors this time from Spain, from Argentina, from China, from um, Denmark. So we have a panel of 10. So do you have MCs for the show? Oh, we're very excited to have William Fulton. Many people from Mississippi remember William Fulton as he was the director of, I believe, MPB back, you know, many years ago. And he now lives in New York. And he is a Mississippian. He will be back again. He's just a whole host of talent in himself because he 
He knows many languages. You don't have to coach him on how to pronounce a name. He knows it, and he knows the ballet, and he knows the music. So he is just wonderful to work with. And then he will be here for the whole competition. And then during round three, we have invited Catherine Barkman back, who is now a um, soloist with the San Francisco Ballet, but she was a former competitor and won a silver in 2018. She is a favorite in the dance world, and we just love her. That's amazing. We've talked a little bit about former competitors. Are there others that are returning and a part of this process? Well, since we have been around since 1979, as you can imagine, now these competitors have grown up and had children of their own and have are seasoned um, professionals within the dance world. So many are coming back in a capacity as a staff member for the IBC. For instance, we have Gretchen Neuberger, who was a bronze junior medalist in 1979. She will be back as a a dance school faculty member and also one of our guest choreographers. We're very excited to have her. I met her in Switzerland uh, when I was there for a for the Prix de Lausanne. It's another dance competition, big dance competition in Europe. And she's very excited to be able to come back. She has family that lives here right in Jackson. Wow. I know. That's incredible. We have about 10 different competitors that are, that had been either medalist or had been in the competition. They just are coming back in some sort of capacity to help us. So on opening night, we will announce them. Uh, we call those our full circle dancers. So the IBC happens every four years. Talk to us about what happens between those four years. You're still very active. Very active. I I know just when I was in college and just, you know, out in the working world and just being a volunteer, I just couldn't figure out what they were doing. (laughs) Well, now that I'm on the other side, it isn't just a volunteer. You, a volunteer does a lot and the IBC would not happen without the volunteers even through the friends of the IBC they do fundraisers each year they help co-sponsor different ballet productions maybe in other theaters around Mississippi and they also help they are the benefactors of our city dance program city dance is a program where we give ballet lessons at no charge to students from Jackson Public Schools, ages 7 to 12. We have an audition every September. It's the Saturday after Labor Day. They come to the Arts Center, and um, we hold the audition. This year, we had 87 dancers, and they take weekly ballet lessons there at the Arts Center by professional, high-quality teachers. They are given free dance wear, sponsored by Block Dance Wear. So they're going to get leotards and tights and shoes. And they have a quality studio. We expose them to visual arts. We have, they have an art project by an APAC teacher who comes in. And um, Rebecca Wilkerson has done that for us um, for the past few years. And then they get to have a spring recital, which we just had in May. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful program. The Lynx organization, uh, the the Jackson, Mississippi chapter of the Lynx is their sponsor as well. And uh, they're actually, we're giving them free tickets to be able to come see a matinee. And the, the Lynx organization is going to have a reception for them. So I'm very excited that these young dancers will be able to see the competition and our goal of this program is to instill the love of the arts mm. through dance that's wonderful i love that you're you know taking them and showing them a pathway and, and exposing them to what a career in the arts can look like right and talk about full circle we have a young lady madison johnson who started as a city dance student from the very beginning she went on through city dance then went on to apac in the dance program And then she has just graduated from University of Southern uh, Mississippi as a dance major. And now she is working for the IBC as the assistant administrator for the dance school. So I think that is a success story. That is absolutely a success story. So this is all happening in the in-between of what takes place every four years. So when is our next IBC? Our next IBC, we're going to go back to our four-year schedule. If nothing goes wrong, (laughs) fingers crossed, will be four years from now, which will be 2027. 
and you know other things that happen during that time fundraising yeah. i will start fundraising during the competition <laughs> because that's when everybody's excited it takes me four years to be able to raise enough money to put this on our budget is very big but we spend every single mm-hmm. penny of it well as you can see uh, listeners, it, it will take you four years to wait for the next IBC. So you should probably go get tickets for it this year. It'll be this June. Uh, Mona, let us know where people can find out more information about the IBC, but also get tickets. Well, if you are familiar with the computer, uh, that's an easy way to go to usaibc.com forward slash attend. You can see the whole schedule. You can purchase your tickets right there. If you want to come down to our box office, the box office will be open June the 1st from 10 to 4 at Thyamara Hall. So please just come to the box office and you can come the night of and get tickets as well. We're not sold out and this is a 2,000 seat theater, but you know tickets are selling very fast right now. But I encourage you to go ahead, get your ticket. We There's not a bad seat at this theater, so. So people can come during uh, the day throughout the competition to the box office. Is there a phone number they can call? 601-355-9853. Wonderful. Mona, is there anything else you'd like to let the listeners know? Please don't miss it. It's the best of the best. If you come to one, I promise you will buy another ticket. (laughs) It's true. Uh, It is the Olympics of ballet. It will change your mind about what you understand about how the performing arts really has a heart and a heartbeat in Mississippi. Uh, Thank you, Mona, for being on the radio hour with us today. We appreciate you. Thanks for listening to this MPB Think Radio podcast. MPB depends on support from listeners. So if you can, please contribute today at MPB on